Well, there are a ton of major questions regarding the potential Cleveland Browns new dome stadium in Brook Park. And we got this yesterday. Cleveland Browns City Council enacts Art Modell Law as Browns continue mulling future stadium options. And we always knew this was a possibility. How is Haslam going to get around this? And actually, what even is the Art Modell Law? Obviously, the Browns moving to Baltimore blindsided they needed to safeguard themselves against another potential relocation I don't think the interpretation of this law really aligns with what Haslam is trying to do here if you want to consider Brook Park a relocation I mean obviously it's not it's still northeast Ohio but tactically it's not Cleveland so that's why a law like this could pass it's a political move by the local government after Haslam admitted back in March that he's exploring the feasibility of building a state-of-the-art domed facility in Brook Park near the airport. The Haslams are in the process of purchasing the 176-acre property. And yeah, so I actually visited the 176-acre area surrounded by barbed wire fence. You can't get in it, but it's, it's still for sale technically. Now, I would imagine... I don't know if it's reserved for Haslam or if there's something in place, but it still says for sale on all the signs, and it's just a massive undeveloped area. Surrounding it is one of the Ford plants. There were originally three Ford plants. There was a second engine building, which was massive to the left, that they knocked down, and then there was the casting plant in the middle, which also got knocked down, and the original Ford plant, the engine room one, is still there. And it just seems weird. Why would you keep a massive Ford plant right next to a brand new stadium development? But you do have to remember, based on where the stadium is going to be located in relation to where that Ford plant is, it's not even going to be close because they're buying up a bunch of acres. And a lot of the acres to that area is going to be parking, which, by the way, is another issue. And I've been emailing with people. It's very surprising the amount of parking that they're going with in terms of this development. Now, all we have to really judge is that one aerial like map photo. It's not even a rendering. It's like where everything is going to be. And there's a bunch of parking and you, you can kind of understand it because it's Brook Park. There's not a ton of great public transportation to get there. There are a few different things you could do, but it's not in Cleveland. So there's going to be more parking. However, that parking does need to be cut down significantly, I would say. The issue with building a parking garage is that parking garages are very ugly. Now, maybe they can remedy that. Maybe they can build a good-looking parking garage. But I do think something has to be done. I would love to see them build the parking underground, although that would probably cause a delay of about a year for this project because building anything underground takes a long time to dig out. But that is a ton of parking for a new development. It's like four or five different lots. It's just too much. And it's the same thing with the Kansas City new stadium rendering that we saw where there's just a sea of parking surrounding it. It does not look good. But that's another story for another day. That's just another question when it comes to the Cleveland Browns stadium. Will there actually be that much parking? Will they have more buildings? It seems like there's just five or six buildings towards the front of the stadium and that would be right next to the airport the stadium is nestled right next to the airport it's separated by a road at least that's what it looks like from the images and then cleveland hopkins airport is also undergoing a massive three billion dollar renovation over the next decade on top of that you can see no owner of a professional sports team that uses a tax supported facility for most of its home games and receives financial assistance from the state or political subdivision thereof shall cease playing most of its home games at the facility and begin playing most of its home games elsewhere until the owner either A, enters into an agreement with the political subdivision permitting the team to play most of its home games elsewhere, or B, gives the political subdivision in which the facility is located not less than six months advance notice of the owner's intention to cease playing most of its home games at the facility and during the six months after such notice gives the political subdivision or any individual or group of individuals who reside in the area the opportunity to purchase the team. So possibly forcing them to sell the team if they leave the Cleveland area, which again is kind of, it's a weird situation if you look at where the stadium would be it right across the street is Cleveland and it's really not Cleveland it's the, the airport which is technically part of Cleveland but again if you I've said this before if you want to go to Progressive Field or even Cleveland Brown Stadium you have got to go 
you know, it would be best bet to get back onto the highway to get to those things. It's not like it's, oh, Progressive Field is three minutes away from this Brook Park site, even though technically Brook Park is right directly next to Cleveland and where this location would be would be, you know, 10 seconds from where Cleveland is. It's just kind of quirky, but this is not a similar situation in terms of relocation. They would still be called the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, nothing would really change. It's just like the Chicago Bears. Well, actually, it's not like the Chicago Bears moving to Arlington Heights because Brook Park is a different city than Arlington Heights. The reason they're try they're possibly going to Brook Park is just because of the location is so amazing with the undeveloped land right next to the airport. Essentially, the piece of legislation prevents the Haslam's from moving the Browns out of the tax-supported facility that is the Cleveland Browns Stadium without six months' notice of doing so, or else they must give other local groups a chance to purchase the franchise, despite the fact that Haslam's plan would simply move the team to the suburbs. The Art Modell law still applies, and so this law is kind of... Not, not that it's meaningless. You understand why the city of Cleveland would do this. They want to safeguard themselves against potentially losing a franchise. It's very important if you get an overzealous owner. I'll tell you, back in like 2012, 2013, there were some rumors about the Indians possibly thinking of moving when they had really bad attendance. So you can understand why something like this would be in place. When it comes to the actual law... You would figure Haslam would give six months notice, right? I mean, the stadium's not going to be built until 2028, likely at the earliest. I would imagine they're going to be operating on the same timeline as the Chicago Bears and the Browns lease is up around 2028 as well. What a great coincidence that is. And you would move into the stadium in Brook Park and you would give the Browns a lot longer than the six months notice. So when it comes to a situation like this, I really don't think the Modell Law is going to be a big problem. There also is the idea, do you just annex that part of Brook Park and incorporate it into Cleveland, even though it's really not even close to downtown Cleveland, you could do that because it's right next to the airport and the airport is part of the city. So there's a lot to take in when it comes to this. I think when you look at the stadium right now, there's some big questions regarding with its proximity to the airport. Is that going to be a problem in terms of making a solid stadium? Is the stadium going to be neutered in terms of the lights, in terms of the design, because it's so close to the airport and you can't distract the pilots? I think that's something that could potentially happen. And that's what could be going on right now with that original rendering that we saw. We're still waiting on more renderings. I could upload this video and then the renderings could get released. They're going to come out at any point. We know that. And they're going to be fully detailed. It's going to be a wide, spread, wide scale renderings release. A lot of people are, oh, how many renderings are they going to release? Is that the only one? No, there's going to be probably 15 to 18. That's how these developments work. We're going to see the interior of it. By the way, another thing, what is the seat color? What is the color of the seats? Is it going to be orange? I hope it is. I think that's a great thing for the city and it kind of makes the stadium unique. The current Cleveland Brown Stadium, of course, does have the orange seats. But again, we're just waiting on the renderings. Maybe they'll come today. Maybe they'll come next week. We don't really know. And you still do have this Art Modell law, which I don't think is going to be a huge issue. The Haslam's have been adamant throughout these ongoing stadium negotiations that they intend to keep the team in Northeast Ohio and that it wouldn't begin playing games elsewhere until after the current lease of the building expires. So it does inspire, expire in 2028. That's what I thought. And that, that's like a perfect timeline. And then they also suggest that they would look to possibly do a short-term extension if needed to give adequate time for a new facility. So a potential new Cleveland Browns stadium happening 2028, maybe 2029, depending on what happens. They want the 50-50 split. And by the way, another thing that I've seen now, originally it was reported it was going to be a billion dollar renovation to Cleveland Browns stadium. It is now 1.2 billion. So now you're talking about a $1.2 billion renovation to Cleveland Brown Stadium with the taxpayers paying $600 million or a $2.4 billion stadium in Brook Park. That would be $2.4 billion with the taxpayers paying $1.2 billion. The 50-50 split comes into play there as well. So that is the current situation when it comes to the potential Cleveland Brown Stadium. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.